Hey friends, it's uh, Lance Questing. I'm here today with uh, Luke Bergler. Uh, it's an awesome day here in Southeast Minnesota. It's uh, 13th of May, 2020. Uh, gonna be about 70. We're calling for a pretty good shot of rain tonight and tomorrow, which we really could use. Uh, we're here to talk a little bit about 60 inch corn and the why behind it. But before we do that, Luke, tell us a little bit about where you're farming, uh, some of the crops you grow, some of the livestock, that type of thing. Thank you, Lance. Uh, Winona County, far southeast Minnesota. Uh, about uh, 50 pairs on the ground, so we're a cow-calf operation. Um, that's diversifying quickly. Uh, we brought some feeder pigs and got my daughters uh, set up with laying hen operations. So we're just trying to provide uh, better, better food for everyone and uh, get a diversity of livestock on our ground. Um, um, small acre corn and beans, um, hay for the cattle, do a lot of sorghum and diverse cover crop mixes. Sure, sure. Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, you've been you're diving into regenerative agriculture and some of the, you know, neat practices that are associated. So tell us a little bit about some of the things you may be been doing or you want to get to or go try. Um, last few years, uh, we're pushing 75%, maybe even higher covers on everything. Uh, we're grazing more acres. Uh, we got our feet wet last year with stockpiling covers to graze over winter. And um, even grazing uh, our, our perennial hay strips as opposed to making them, just try to cut back fuel and man hours and makes life a, a little more enjoyable. Uh, tell us a little bit, You, you uh, I know you're gonna try some high, high stock density with some grazing things. You've been traditionally a, more of a rotational grazer, but uh, you know, we went down to Ray Archuleta's with the Soil Health Academy. Um, you, you're gonna try some of that, push the envelope a little bit there. Yeah, we've been uh, rotational grazing probably 10 to 12 years here now. Um, that's not the cure-all, so look at things different. Soil Health Academy was, uh, was a big eye-opener and look at more um, intense manage and, and uh, high, high stocking rates and just change things up a little bit. Try to uh, leave a little more grass behind and uh, see if we just can't help our, help our soil out doing it that way. Sure, sure, very good. So again, we're here to talk a little bit about 60-inch corn. First of all, let's talk about your objectives or your, your why in, in wanting to try 60-inch corn. Last year, uh, farming 30s with um, interseeded, about a 15-way mix, uh, really brought the light to the amount of forage uh, available for them cows. Uh, extended our grazing season out on the stalks not to mention the quality of forage, uh, the money saved in mineral and, and stuff like that. Um, as added bonuses, the additional ground cover and the diversity in the ground. And so when you think about 60s and you want to run with interseeding, I'm going to guess we're going to at least double the biomass, um, not only to help the soil, but to put that many more acres of feed up for the cows and uh, more feed to graze is less work for me. Sure. And I know last year, Luke was really happy. You, you got, what was it, like three or four weeks of basically extended grazing where you didn't have to feed hay, wasn't it? Like 25, 30 days, something yeah. like that? Yeah. Um, yeah, we were in that, we probably extended roughly a month. And I, I just, I can't stress enough the quality of grazing in an interseeding program over just uh, straight corn stalks. Sure, sure. Uh, some of the other things we talked about, you're looking to capture more sunlight by having a, a wider canopy or opening up the canopy. Um, again, more diversity, uh, more biomass, but also tell us a little bit about your desire to kind of pump more carbon into the ground. Well, if we can open our rows up and increase uh, plant diversity out here and uh, get everything kind of working in harmony together. And, uh, you know, when we get out to 60s, I'm sure there's a few of you understand the, the sunlight effect with the corn. Um, I'm staring at 60s, looking at uh, what I can do for the ground and um, put the diversity out here to help the, to help the soil. 
Sure, sure. So let's get down to some more of the details about, let's start off with this field. What, what's some of the history here? There's a pretty nice crop of rye coming, but tell us what it was two years ago and then last year, that type of thing. So we were minimum till corn. Um, we came in last spring and frost seeded this uh, oat rye at about 60 pounds. Uh, went really well. We no-till green soybeans in. Uh, we killed our cover at about 30 inches, 36 inches. Uh, beans ran very well on it. Um, we came in about the first week of November, 70 pounds of winter rye. And now we're no-tilling corn back into that green. Perfect, perfect. So talk, tell us a little bit about the planter you got here, what model, some of the you know different components you got on the rig. Well, planter's nothing special, which tells me this can be done with, uh, with anything if you put your mind to it. Uh, John Deere 1750 Conservation, starting from the front to the back. I do not run a no-till opener. It's single disc fertilizer. Fixed row cleaners, uh, which are set extremely light. I just want to clean. I don't want a trench. Mm -hmm. um, seed openers, serrated prescription tillage technology. Um, very good money spent, in my opinion. Heat and seed firmer in the trench. And Schlago Posi closers in the rear both sides. And that does a nice job of leaving a nice mulch on top of the, of the seed trench. And really setting that seed in nice. Perfect, perfect. And part of the reason I think Luke is running very light on his row cleaners and then also this style of, of, of closures is that you want to leave that armor there. You don't want to have, you know, a six inch or even eight inch wide seed trench that's that's black. You don't feel you need that with, because we're out here again, it's the 13th of May and we've got decent soil temperatures and we've got pretty awesome. We were just digging out here in the row uh, marker track and there's worms everywhere. There's still moisture at what? Three quarter inch? Yep, half to three quarter. I'm holding pretty good moisture yet compared to uh, ground that maybe was turned over. Yep. And uh, you know, the, the cover crop really went full swing uh, the last few years when, when the heavy rains mm. um, just wouldn't leave us alone. And so if I'm out here trenching with my row cleaners, that, all that does is give that rain a channel to follow and you're not doing it any justice. You bet. So tell us a little bit about the population. You normally plant that, what population? So on a normal year planting six row 30s, we'd be at um, 33, 35,000. So 60 inch um, manual transmit or mechanical transmission on this planter. I'm able to manipulate everything to do about 61,000 in row roughly mm -hmm. but you have half your rows so we're in that 30 31,000 in theory across across the whole planet uh, across the acre right Correct. yes uh, that can be very confusing for some and I won't tell you I'm spot on with it sure. but um, here's my true feelings if we can't try something new where the corn markets are today you will never try anything new because what do you honestly have to lose? Agreed, agreed. So tell us a little bit to break down kind of your, your spacing on your corn, on the kernels. Normally you're at what? Five, five and a half inch at 34,000 and now you're gonna be what? Yeah, we'd be, we'd be in that five, five and a half. And so, uh, you know, we're gonna look at two and a half, three, uh, depending where we're at. Uh, I, push towards a smaller seed because I know my planter can plant heavier and that's kind of what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. um, chose a semi-flex, a 97 day hybrid that I have some experience with no-tilling and uh, that took one factor out of the equation when I can put the seed in a box that I already know what he's going to do. Uh, the only thing I don't know what he's going to do is when he's that crowded in the row. Sure. But that's partly why you're trying this to kind of see how one of your top producing hybrids is going to produce in this equation on 60 inch rows. Correct. And I, I, I think it's going to do just fine because uh, he was one of my better producing stands last year on some of my poorer ground. 
and so I think we can we can crowd them in here and uh, this particular piece of ground isn't my worst ground so we're going to give it a whirl. Yeah, you bet. So tell us kind of as we wrap up how you're going to define success as we you know obviously we're probably going to get out here and do some stand counts eventually but how are you going to define success you know when the combine comes through and even after that how, how do you define success in this this 60 inch trial? Well, as far as the combine coming through, I have a number in my mind where I'd like to be with bushels, but that I won't even talk about that because I'm not chasing bushels. Um, I'm looking at ground cover. I'm looking at feed for cows. The other thing I'm looking at, uh, we come in here with the interseeder, let's just say at V3, V4, so we're looking at maybe 30 days. Um, and we can put down a 15, 20 way mix. There's a lot of power in that diversity not to mention wildlife cover birds mm. um, i love the conservation aspect of it we keep this rolling ground covered uh, behind the camera you can't see our beehives mm. i'm sure they're going to appreciate some extra flowering plants absolutely in, um 50 feet away uh, just simple things like that yeah you bet you bet so i just want to say thanks friends for joining us you know we're out here trying to show what people are trying and, and Luke and uh, a good friend of ours Mike Steinfeld these guys kind of work together in a lot of things uh, you know it's, it's a lot of fun to try different things out so I'd encourage you if you like our videos to you know give us a like or share it with a, a friend um, and we'll definitely be doing more videos throughout the summer uh, so lastly just thanks for joining us and uh, choose to make it a great day everyone